welcome to Activate with Pastor Christian Newsom, a podcast of Journey Church International. Thank you so much for joining us today. You're currently listening to the Activate podcast with Pastor Christian Newsom. This podcast is a ministry resource of Journey Church International in Lee Summit, Missouri. My name is Alex Burns, and I serve as the technical director at JCI. This Sunday was message 5 of 17 in our series, The Kingdom. This week's message is entitled, But Do You Know Him? Welcome to each of you joining us today. If you missed this week's message, you can go right now and check it out on our YouTube page, on our website at takethejourney.cc, or on the JCI app. People tune in every week to the podcast for practical ideas on growing in their faith. Our mission through this podcast is that your faith would truly be activated. Through this conversation, we hope that Jesus would speak something directly to your heart. Well, two weeks in a row, Pastor Christian Gracia, mm. thanks for being here today. So, B-team, so excited man. for this. Yeah, B team. Yep, it's going to be a great conversation today. I wanted to start off um, our conversation by talking about kids camp. So this is happening in literally just one short week. We got one week in between the first day of kids camp. Mm-hmm. Uh, kids camp is Monday through Thursday, June sixth through 9th from nine thirty to noon each morning. And when I spoke with Heidi Bailey this morning, she's our kids ministry director. She shared that we already have just over 500 kids signed up this summer for for kids camp. It's it's amazing. God is truly doing something truly inspiring, I think, in the younger generations here at at Journey. It's really, really fun In our community. Yeah. Really. So my first question is, how would you encourage maybe the family that still might be on the edge of whether or not they want to enroll their kids in kids camp? Um, well, I would say this. So last year we had a really cool story about that very thing. Yeah. We actually had a family who was not plugged into church, but somehow their kids found out about kids camp. Um, I think it was actually called Jam Week last, yeah, year, it last was. year. This is our we first name one. change. Yeah, yeah, yep. name change, kids camp. Yep. But uh, they got their kids signed up, and they actually was it was their kids going to kids camp Jam Week that actually got the mom specifically. Um, out of her house, plugged into church, and now she's like fully plugged in here on mm. Journey. And so she was kind of in a place of being stuck. And because of her yeah. kids going to kids camp, she was encouraged to get out of that, check Journey out one time because of Celebration Sunday that followed the week, which yeah. happens, um, I believe, the 12th. That sounds right. Yeah, the 12th yep. is going to be Celebration Sunday right after kids camp mm-hmm. um, happens. We're going to bring everyone together on Sunday and, and have a great time and talk about what God did. All the kids on stage, the whole, yep. the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. so she awesome. came to that last year, and that was her her first step to yeah. get plugged in the journey. And so I'd say to those families, man, come check it out. Even mm-hmm. if you don't feel like it's going to be worth it, even if you don't feel like it's going to be good, you just never know what God's going to do. If you're a family that actually has someone they want to invite, remember that story as mm-hmm. a way to get a family plugged in. I mean, there's just a lot of ways that God gets us back to him yeah. and kids camp is a great opportunity because of the of of the kids reaches a lot of families you just talked about 500 yeah. kids are gonna be coming to this yeah. that's a lot of families in our community and thank god for that so there's a some really great opportunity there to get mm-hmm. plugged in that's good that's good heidi told me that if you're interested in enrolling your chi- your children at kids camp this year you can still go to kidscamp.cc for a walk-in registration form and then join us june 6 through 9 for one of the literally one of the best weeks of the summer yeah. i think it's going to be great having all those fun. kids in there really it's going to be awesome Let's jump into your message from this week. Um, foundational truth number five that you laid out for us is that kingdom people must understand the reasons why people reject Jesus. So this this concept of rejection, wh- what do you think the most common reasons that people reject Jesus and his his um, his story, his the, the gospel? Right. Yeah. So in this in the message, I talk about three reasons we see in the passage in John 13, 53 through 58. And the first one is they're too concerned about the details of Jesus. That's one that kind of talks about elevating the irrelevant to where they, they know the message of Jesus, they see what he can do, but they just can't get past mm-hmm. all the stuff surrounding him. Mm-hmm. But then there's two other reasons. They're too offended by his claims and they're too prideful to accept his message. Yeah. I would say that's probably a, the mix of those last two is the greatest reasons why people reject Jesus is because they just don't want to receive it. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, I mean, we talked about last week with judgment. The gospel is good news because of the bad news. And it's just, it's hard. It's hard to receive that you need help, that you're mm-hmm. broken, you're mm-hmm. sinful, Christians broken and sinful, yeah. and you need to be saved. I mean, mm-hmm. that's easy for, easier for people who are in, I think, a tough position in life. Really hard for a lot of people in America who have affluent lives, yeah. who have everything they want, and it's going well, and they're successful, and they be- and like they don't think they need it. Mm-hmm. That's a hard message to embrace. Yeah. Um, and so I think the number one reason, at the end of the day, is pride. Yeah. We're not humble enough to admit our need, or we're not even able to see our need for God, hmm. and so we end up rejecting Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I too, too often, I think that's just a, a common story that that we we put other things in front of Jesus because we just don't think that we need Him. Right? right? It's that it's right. that pride that you're talking about, and it's, it's something you battle the whole life. Yeah. I mean, as Christians, yeah, not just to, lost, but as Christians, like absolutely, in our journey. Yeah. we have to be reminded. Yeah. John 15, apart from you, can do nothing. That doesn't yeah. just you know end when we get saved. 
I would say actually it's, it starts when you get saved and the rest mm. of your life, Jesus is carrying us on. Yeah. Um, and I think it's easy to, to lose sight of that with just, you know, life in general and being busy, but to remember our dependence on him is I think a discipline spiritually to remember mm. that, that man, we, everything we have is from him. Our life is from him and we need him yeah. to do this thing called being a follower of Jesus. It's good. Yeah. One concept you go over in your message is that sometimes people see Jesus as more of a celebrity, and maybe they they choose not to have a, a true friendship or relationship mm. with Jesus. Um, you use the example of, of your wife, Patrick Mahomes, some other celebrity figures to portray that sometimes we know things or very specific details, like someone's address, yeah. um, about you know details about those people. But in reality, we don't really know them at all. Yeah. And and how often does that happen in 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 a Christian walk in spirituality? Yeah. So, so what are some key differences between someone with a genuine relationship with Jesus who is walking faithfully and daily with him versus someone who simply knows a vast amount of details? And, and maybe what are, what are some of the different fruits that they can produce mm. as those two groups of people? There's not a, there's not a perfect way to answer this question. Mm. I mean, the Bible is very um, clear. There will be people who go through life thinking they know Jesus and end up don't, and they all do mm. different things. Some have a lack of fruit. In their life, some have a lot of fruit, but they miss it completely, right? Mm-hmm. Like they they have all the works and they're doing all the right things, mm-hmm. but they don't have the relationship with Jesus. Some people think they have a relationship with Jesus, but they lack the fruit. So I think, I mean, you look at it in terms of a relationship, my marriage to Hannah, you know, yeah. it's not just me learning things about her in the sense of having facts. She's not in a jar for me to study and to learn the things about her. Mm-hmm. She's there for me to engage with, to have a relationship with, to spend time with. I think that's a big marker for people mm-hmm. who are followers of Jesus. Do you spend time with him? You know, is there is your life built around that? Is there a relationship that you engage with? It's not a religion, yeah. but it's someone to know. Eternal life, we're told in John 17, 3, is literally to know the one true God in Jesus Christ whom he has sent. Yeah. Our lives for all eternity will be to know and to grow in knowledge of mm-hmm. Jesus in a relational way, not just knowledge. Not just not details. Just, yeah, I know yeah. his eye color, yeah. but to know him and experience him. And I think out of that, there is... You know, the evidences of your life, like we said before, there is an outworking in our lives of knowing Jesus that the more you know him, as we talked about in the message, the more that he's going to lead us in truth, yeah. that we're going to see some things aren't in line in our life, and we're going to have to make changes. And so is there life change? Hmm. You know, is there a way that he's leading you and showing you more of who he is and then putting that up against who you are and realizing, yeah. oh, that's not right? And then, you know, the spirit in you sanctifying you, making you more like Jesus is an mm-hmm. ongoing process. And I think there's a lot of people on both sides were like the Pharisees, they got all the laws down, but they missed the relationship. And then there's a lot of people in, in today in America, I'd say this is from my background, nominal Christianity yeah. that has the banner of Christianity but doesn't have the life of it. Mm-hmm. You know, like they mm-hmm. they think they enough they have the grace, you know, they have the relationship with Jesus, but man, there's no fruit and they have no commitment yeah. to Jesus, no devotion to Jesus. Mm-hmm. And really it's it's kind of a, a cold marriage, if you will, mm-hmm. of like, we're, we got the wedding ring on, but like there's no day nights, there's no time spent together, yeah. there's no intimacy there. So it's, you know, there, there's a both and. There's a really, it's a, it's a tough thing to put together, but I put it in the t- context of a relationship to, to ask someone, how is your relationship with Jesus growing? Yeah. How does that look? And yeah. that's that's hard sometimes because... If you're not walking with Jesus, you can't answer that question. You mm-hmm. you might be stunned and be like, uh, well, I go to church. It's like, well, great. Is yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. is that it? You know, like when I, I don't only mm-hmm. see Hannah once a week, I see yeah. her every, every day, day of my life. I'm yeah. talking with her throughout the day. You know, so mm-hmm. things like that I think help us to think in those terms um, to show us what that looks like. Yeah, that's good. You you said something, and this kind of refers back to talking about pride earlier. A lot of people don't understand that when you're walking with Jesus, you mm-hmm. should start to look more like Jesus and less like yourself. Yes, in many, many ways. I've, I'll, we'll talk about that later when it, you know, Scripture talks about using the Bible more as a mirror. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of times, like if you're if you're walking correctly with Jesus, you should look more like Him and and less like maybe what people think you are, who you are. Yes, maybe that's from your past. Maybe that's what your family sees you. Maybe it's yeah. different perceptions and whatnot. Yes, but, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll just leave that one. Just right there. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, you said something in your message that was truly captivating to me when I heard it, um, and, and honestly pretty convicting, and that was the quote, um, there seems to be a growing crowd of Christians that would rather win an argument than win a soul. Mm. Um, sometimes I think Christians spend way too much time talking about, and, and really let's call it what it is, arguing, not just talking, but sometimes actually arguing like in heated discussions yeah. um, about theology or minute details, um, and they completely miss talking about Jesus altogether. 
Um, you referenced 2 Timothy 2.23, and that says, don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because, mm-hmm. they know, um, because you know that they produce quarrels. What are practical ways of how Christians can first recognize and then secondly disarm maybe during these foolish and stupid arguments, as Timothy refers to them, uh, with people who are so bent on making a point or winning an argument about things that ultimately probably don't matter? Yeah, well, first off, I'd say it starts with us. I mean, it starts with Christians in that regard of we should not expect people who don't know Jesus to act like people who know Jesus. In the same way, we (laughs) should not act like people who don't know Jesus when we know Jesus. And I think that's what Paul's point there to Timothy is, hey, be above this. You, you You are held to a higher standard because you have the Holy Spirit of God in you. And I think, you know, a lot of people have lost sight of that. They've lost the reality that we don't have to respect everyone's beliefs in the sense of, like, affirming them, Mm -hmm. but we got to respect the person. We have to love the person while we plead with them, uh, you know, to turn to Jesus. And so I think it's, it's a matter of just centering ourselves on Jesus to remember that he's the main point, he's the main thing, Mm -hmm. um, and anything else, negotiable. Yeah. It's not a non-negotiable truth to have a, a certain political bend mm. or to believe a certain thing about theology, unless that theology is like of the human nature of Jesus or something that, yeah. that yeah. will change what we believe that's foundational to what we believe. But there's a lot of things out there that don't make or break what we believe yeah. as Christians. And some people lose sight of that. You know, yeah. like the first, the first point we talked about, they're too concerned about the, the surrounding details of Jesus mm-hmm. that they miss him and they, miss him. they forget. It's almost like a cloud. It, exactly. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, you're, you're grasping for things that isn't the point. Yeah. You know, you're evangelizing about the things that are not Jesus. Um, and so I think it's our heart remembering that. Like at the end of the day, we're trying to win a person, not an argument. Mm. Um, the only thing we should be concerned about is do they believe and know Jesus? Yeah. Okay, they have different views of me on political matters. They have a different theology or a lack of theology. They have some weird, you know, there's, that's fine. Yeah. That can be worked with. That can be tolerated. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, do they know Jesus? Yeah. I think keeping that at the center is a really big deal. And just remembering you can say the right thing the wrong way and it be wrong. Yeah. You can say the right thing the wrong time and be wrong. Yeah. It's so many factors in that. Of That's why Paul told Timothy, like, be respectable, mm-hmm. you know, be be gentle with them. It's yeah. like, that's on us, yeah. how to communicate certain things and not just argue, yeah. you know, but to be disarming to people, mm-hmm. to stay above that, to mm-hmm. be those that don't uh, stir them up, but try to calm them down, yeah. to build a relationship that can one day, hopefully, share the gospel, yeah. you know? That's the end goal. Yeah, yeah. You talk about, um, right in the middle of your message, you talk about um, offense, right? Feeling offended, being offended. I think being offended is almost written into the following of Jesus Christ, right? The gospel should offend people. The message of Jesus should offend you at times. Um, Because it's not of this world, it's of heavenly origin. So it kind of rubs against the grain of everything that we know um, growing up on earth. Um, How does offense and conviction, those are two words I'm going to play here, Offense and conviction play an integral role in life change that someone experiences during their walk with Jesus. So I think they're like both and similar but different. So in the sense of I think people who don't know Jesus at first, the message and teachings of Jesus are offensive. Mm -hmm. And then let's say that person comes to know Jesus and they become a Christian. I think then what happens is that doesn't go away Mm -hmm. because I think his teachings forever are offensive in some way. But now what happens is we experience conviction. Now as Christians, one of the main functions of the Spirit that we're told in in John 16 is that he was sent to convict the world of sin and righteousness. So we ought to expect, as we walk with Jesus, that the Spirit in us is going to convict us of things that are out of line with our life. Mm -hmm. You know, going to give, as Paul says in 2 Corinthians 7, godly grief that leads us to repentance that has no regret. You know, so that's the kind of glorious rhythm of being a Christian when it comes to missing our way and stumbling. The Spirit of God will convict us, show us what's wrong, offend us in a way, Mm -hmm. but then lead us to a place where we turn away from that sin and turn to Jesus, and there's no guilt left. Because that's not his job. His his goal is not for us to feel horrible. Mm -hmm. His goal for us is to admit that we're wrong, confess that sin, and turn to him. So I think we have to understand, as as followers of Jesus, reading the Bible is going to lead to some parts. Should. Forever. (laughs) You know, you don't arrive, right? right? Like, I'm reading my Bible this morning. Mm -hmm. There's things I'm reading, I'm like, man... Christian Shoot. needs to grow in that <laughs> yeah. area. Like, yep. this is me. Like, Lord, mm-hmm. help me with this because I don't do this well. Yeah. And that's going to be forever. The book is a physical book, but it's limitless with wisdom and knowledge for us to be Christians. And I think we have to grow 
comfortable with it making us uncomfortable mm -hmm. and us and it convicting us, which would be really, you know, offending us for the rest of our days. But because, you know, God loves us, he knows better yeah. than us. We're broken, sinful. We need to listen to him yeah. and live in the ways that he's called us to mm -hmm. is the best way to live life. Yeah. You know, and almost expecting like in our in our personal Bible reading time that that maybe we should be crossing over something that sh that, that does offend us being mm -hmm. being OK with that happening. Mm. Um, not just checking off the list just to say that we read, read yeah. something, but but really yeah. like reading into that content and saying, how yeah. can, how is the Lord trying to improve me, yeah. me, Alex, right, in this? Yeah. Not how is it trying to improve my neighbor or my friend. Yeah. You know, I read this yeah. message. I'm like, hey, I read this today. I think you really need this passage. Like, yeah. We've all been there. Where yeah. you're reading something, you think of someone else. It's really good. That's a great heart to have, you know, yeah. for accountability and loving others. But if you don't have that for yourself, of mm -hmm. having the ability to have the self-awareness and introspection yeah. You're missing something. I yeah. think that's where you you kind of could be a red flag in your faith a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. That you should you should maybe pour into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's exactly where we're going. So you talk about James one twenty two through twenty five, and it's really this concept as the Bible is a mirror. I've heard someone in the past beg the question: You spend time in the Bible, but how much of the Bible is actually in you? Yeah. Um, what are practical ways that we can, as Christians, utilize the Bible as a mirror daily in our quiet time and in our Bible reading, ultimately in order to walk further from the world and closer to Jesus? So I would say the way to do that, I mean, we just kind of talked about it a little bit. Having an awareness is one thing. I think seeing the Bible, your time alone with the Lord, I think, seeing it in a different light will help with this. Yeah. If you just go to the Bible and you're just trying to read it for information, but it's not a relational tool for you and Jesus, you're, you're missing it. Whereas if you come to your Bible every day, every morning, and that the Word of God is used as kind of a conversational piece between you and Jesus, yeah. you know, where it's like, that's him speaking to us, mm -hmm. and it's us responding in prayer. You know, so praying through what you're reading, I think it's helpful. As you read through some stuff, asking him, Lord, is is this true about me? Mm -hmm. Is this an area that I need to work on? You know, like yeah. you can read a command in Scripture, and you may think you're good, but like stop in that moment yeah. and pray. Mm -hmm. Say, Jesus, is this is this me? Mm -hmm. Am I off in this? Is this a weak area? Or you feel him kind of put his finger on some area of your life. Man, respond in that moment. I think using the Bible in that way as that conversational piece really helps with us being open to the Bible being a mirror, mm. you know, because like we say, Hebrews 4, it's a living and active sword. It is yeah. discerning the thoughts and intentions of our hearts. It's reading us while we read it. Yeah. It's having it in us, right? Yeah. Um, and I think being aware of that and allowing there to be a conversation to process it, to stop for a moment mm -hmm. and not just get facts down, yeah. but to really wrestle with it is a way that we look in the mirror and we say, oh, is, is, am I okay? Am I good? Am I, is my caller all right? Spiritually speaking, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And then letting yeah. Jesus, sitting in that moment, kind of lead you in that. That's mm -hmm. that relational piece I think people might be missing, even in their times alone with the Lord. Yeah. Use the Bible as a way to talk with Jesus. Like, yeah. That's his words to you. Your response is prayer. Yeah. You know, when there's a command, there's a promise, where these things pop up, ask him. Like, mm -hmm. proclaim those things or claim those promises. Um, and just be sensitive to his yeah. leading in that moment. Yeah, and I think it's important that that using the Bible as a mirror is not something that you use seasonally. Right? Yes, that is a daily thing. That's uh -huh. not like one week I'm going to do it, one week I'm not. I'm, uh, you know, my my kids are out of school, so I'm not going to pay attention to the Bible yeah. over the summer or anything yeah. like that. It's it, it it's really important to be consistent in that. Mm -hmm. I, I know people in my own life that have struggled with this, and I I, I even know in, in my past I've had seasons where in good times Jesus takes a back burner position in my heart because things are great and, yeah. and I don't feel like I need Jesus in that season. But then the moment that I do need something or life hits a low spot, then I bring Jesus more into the picture. How would you help coach our listeners to, to keep Jesus at the forefront of our lives and not allow the quality of our life to be the driver for our desire mm. for time with Jesus? Really hard. Because the reality is, I think when life is going good, oftentimes it's actually hard to spend time with Jesus. Mm -hmm. But when life is going bad, we're like confused and we're like, what's going on, Jesus? So I think there's a tension to walk of not having a circumstantial faith mm -hmm. where if my life is good, my faith is strong. Yeah. My life is bad, my, my faith is weak. And the reality is the Bible tells us the trials that we go through, James talks about this in James 1, the first few verses we read, it says, count all joy when you meet trials of various yeah. kinds yeah. because it's growing you, it's developing you. I think understanding that in my walk with Jesus, man, it's been the, the darker, harder times in my life that I've seen his grace more brightly. Mm -hmm. And that's hard. Yeah. Like, I, I don't look forward to the trials of life, but I do look forward to knowing Jesus more. Yeah. And I think this, I think going back to last week, when things go wrong in life and there's difficult things to understand and embrace about Jesus, about God, whether it's in the Bible or in your own experience, go back to the cross. Mm -hmm. 
as just the biggest symbol of who God is. And the reality is that was the worst moment in human history, the death of the Son of God. Yeah. And it ended up being the greatest moment yeah. in human history, the redemption of, of all mankind. Mm-hmm. So God is able to do that. Romans 8 tells us, works all things together for good for those who are, they, that love him and call according to his purposes. So I think having the right understanding of those things is really crucial. That relationship, I think, that you grow with him, having the intimacy there is really helpful of, man, life goes, goes wrong. But like, think of it, again, like as a relationship. Mm-hmm. Your marriage to Katie, your wife, my marriage to Hannah yeah. is deeper and stronger when we walk through conflict and yeah. trials together. Yeah. If it's always just roses and happiness, there's no depth there. Stay some surface level. There. Stay surface level, and you never learn about some people. Mm-hmm. There's some things that you're going to experience about Jesus by going through the trials and the ups and downs of life mm-hmm. that would not be possible if you didn't go through them before. You know, I mean, it's throughout the whole the whole Bible. I mean, yeah. when people are shocked, life goes bad. Mm-hmm. I'm always kind of wondering, have you read this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> have you read yeah. any page of this book? Mm-hmm. I mean, like. Mm-hmm. The guy we follow was murdered, you know? I mean, he did not have an easy life, and he told us it's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. And that doesn't make it easy. Life is going to challenge you. But to embrace those things and understand that this is what's going to make your relationship with Jesus stronger, I think, is a way to get through. And just, yeah. man, use those times to throw yourself on the cross, throw yourself on the promises. And those times you reading the Bible, man, just talk with him more, pouring your heart out to him. I think it's, at the end of the day, the way we manage is through relationship mm-hmm. and the highs and the lows. Yeah. Having that in, in our lives makes the difference. It's what sets people apart. Yeah. And Jesus desires to have that relationship yes. with us. He wants to listen to us. He yes. wants us to lay those things at his feet. Yeah. Not just ignore us or ignore him um, until things get really, really bad right. and we start asking for the things that would make our life easier or better. He yeah. just wants that deep des- desire for a relationship with us. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's inviting. I mean, he, yeah. how many times in the Bible he's saying, come to me? And Matthew 11, 20 to 30, says, come to me all who are mm-hmm. weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Yeah. I mean, like he has a whole reality of his heart is gentle and lowly is the way it's described. The only place that he talks about his heart are those two mm-hmm. phrases. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm reading a book right now, Gentle and Lowly by um, Dane Ortland. incredible read about that passage. Yeah. And he says, Jesus is the most accessible person hmm. that we have, yeah. who's gentle and lonely, inviting, accessible. Just understanding that Jesus wants you to come to him when you're yeah. confused and frustrated and yeah. hurting. He's saying, come to me. Yeah, he doesn't I'm have here. business hours. No. Yeah. yeah, his business hours is Are, you. Monday through Friday, 24-7. It's right. Monday through so, all days. All day, <laughs> right? 24-7. All week. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, man. We'll edit that. That's funny. Um, my last question for you. Uh, many are familiar with the passage in Matthew 7, 21 through 23, and it reads, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name, drive out demons, and in your name, perform many miracles. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Hmm. Away from me, you evildoers. What significance does this text play into your message this week? And how do Christians, or how as Christians can we hope to avoid this encounter with Jesus where he says, I never knew you? So it goes back to a few of the things that we've talked about already, but I'd say in the, in the beginning of my message, I set up this tension spiritually with the people in Nazareth that they saw what Jesus could do. Mm-hmm. They understood what he's taught, but they missed who he was. And there's just a stark difference in knowing about someone and knowing someone. And I think we know the difference in our heart. I think we know the difference of, like, you know Jesus and you know about him. A lot of people who were raised in church, they might be in that crowd of people who have been raised around Christianity, but they themselves may have never surrendered their life to Jesus, but they just have kind of banked on what they've been in, their environment. Mm -hmm. And some people, they know. They know they've thrown themselves on the grace of Jesus. They have a relationship with him. They're on fire for him. I mean, like, they they know that Mm -hmm. there's a relationship there. And I think that's the main point that Jesus is saying is it's not just one, it's not just doing things for me and knowing what I want to do, knowing the mission. I mean, they say it. We did all these things in your name. Mm-hmm. We we're furthering your mission, your kingdom. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, Yeah, but you know me. Yeah. And the way, the reason why we get to heaven, Alex, is not because we did all these things. Mm-hmm. That's anti gospel. Mm-hmm. We get to heaven to say, We know your son Jesus. Yeah. And we banked everything we have on what he did for us, mm-hmm. that he saved us. We've had faith in his work. And that's when, you know, that's when the, the gates open up, right? It's yeah. not because of any merit or anything we do. We don't boast in anything but Jesus. So I think it's a, it's a plea to go to people again to ask the question, how does the relationship with Jesus look? Mm-hmm. How is it growing? What's it look like? Do you know him? It's the title of the sermon, mm-hmm. but do you know him? Mm-hmm. You did a lot of cool things for him. You've been in church your whole life. Mm-hmm. You know all the theology, but do you know him? Yeah. At the end of the day, that's what matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's good. If you if you haven't listened to, we're, so we're five foundational truths in, yep. um, and, and the, we're going through seventeen of them that we'll lay out. If you if you haven't listened to the first five, I would encourage our listeners to go back, um, find our messages, listen to those because yeah. I think they will really activate something yeah. in your faith. And actually, we finished so it's segments of, of seventeen weeks of the kingdom, and so yeah. foundational truths are are now completed. Now we're going to be moving on to okay. some citizen profiles. We're going to be talking about the people in the kingdom now. Gotcha. So we're going to be looking at specific examples of those people that we run into that we may be ourselves in the kingdom or we may be having to deal with in the kingdom. We're going to kind of see now the foundational truths play out in Jesus' life. He's taught them now in Matthew 13. Now we're going to see them in real life. In real life. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Well, thank you to those of you who have taken time to listen to this episode of Activate this week. We're so honored that we got to spend a few minutes with you today, and our prayer is that God has spoken something directly to your heart. We hope that you join Pastor Ryan and Pastor Christian, who will be with us next week on the Activate podcast. Yep, they will return, uh, and they'll give us more biblical insights, as they always do, uh, and ways to truly activate your faith. If you live within the Kansas City area, we want to meet you uh, in person at one of our two weekend worship experiences, 8.30 and 10.30 on Sunday mornings. And don't forget, June 6th through 9th is Kids Camp at Journey. Make sure to enroll your kids. K through 6, there is still time. If you have questions about, about your spiritual journey or a celebration to share about what God is doing in your life, um, feel free to email at us at activate at takethejourney.cc. We would just love to hear from you. We look forward to catching you next time on the Activate Podcast, where we challenge you to build a faith that is active. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Activate. We would love for you to join us in person for one of our weekly worship experiences. You can find out more information about JCI on our website at takethejourney.cc. Help us get the word out about this resource. You can do so by subscribing, reviewing, and sharing this episode on your favorite social media platform. Thanks again for listening, and we'll catch you next time on the Activate Podcast.